All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2019. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. Resolved that the agenda for the January 2nd, 2019 regular meeting of Council, Council be received. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that the minutes for the December the 18th, 2018 meet meeting be approved and received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the public hearing 6 2018 now be called to order. Well, I guess we have to wait for it. We need Derek. Where do you go? We need our CEO. Mm -hmm. I'll we'll just take that. a break here for a second. <laughs> Somebody chased them out of the room. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't <coughs> that there might be the wrong bylaw on the agenda. Oh. Let's, uh, we'll just skip that and we'll just move on to the, uh, to the next one here. Okay, so item 6-1, we'll move up to the new Provincial Electoral Division boundaries released. Uh, there's some information there for you to have a look at. Any discussion on that at all? It's just more or less just for information, but you can see that uh, the Provincial Boundaries Commission has released the details of what our <clears throat> municipal or the uh, riding of Swan River will look like. Councillor White. Uh, Your Worship, just a comment. I think it's wonderful for our Valley community that we stay as a separate entity independent of our friends from Dauphin. I, I don't think they wanted to meld with us either, and I think it'll be good for both parties. Councilor Delorier. I just wanted to comment on uh, on sometimes you actually get traction. Lobbying actually pays off, and this is a good case in point. We worked hard to uh, get our point <coughs> across, and I think uh, I think it was uh, heard. We, our, our, we were tied for the most number of submissions across the entire province, so I think we spoke and they heard us. I believe that was uh, something like 17 submissions that were made. Let's uh, do council's uh, reports, and we'll start with Councillor Friesen. Do I always be ready? I am ready. I just uh, didn't think that was on there. We're, uh, we're moving was, along. So it was manager's meeting minutes before yeah, councillor. It will. Okay. Shut up and tell me what I've been doing, right? Um, Twenty-third, we did the memorial candles out at the cemetery. We had about seventy people come out. It was really good. It was a beautiful night, and um, I think everybody enjoyed being there with other people who were sharing the same feelings. Um, we lost a great guy a week ago with Mr. Winstaw passing away. If a funeral can be nice, it was one of the best. Um, I had a good Christmas, went out to Alberta, visited my daughter and multi-family members. We all had beds, which was important. Cool. And Happy New Year to everybody. That's it. Tell us more, are you ready? Yeah. Um, I guess since uh, our last meeting, we over the holidays, we haven't really done anything much. Um, so I just want to wish everybody in the town of Swan River and our neighbors and the rest of the Swan Valley a uh, Merry Christmas and a uh, Happy New Year and uh, look forward to continuing on in the new year. Okay. <coughs> Council of Dillon. From my <coughs> wife and family, I wish everybody a Happy New Year as in terms of working on uh, meetings. I've done an extensive amount of, of filing and, and 
focusing on my notes and I've got a lot of questions for committees that are coming up um, but I didn't want to hassle anybody over the holidays but those will be coming up other than that new year we've got a lot of challenges ahead and uh, we're going to persevere and we'll be a great working team to ensure that our community is is being very proactive and not reactive what you're saying is back to work that's right <laughs> <laughs> councilor delorier back to work is right i've done pretty much nothing town related since our last meeting so uh happy new year to everybody and uh Glad, glad to be back. Thank you. Councilor White. Uh, Councilor Morio uh, forgot one more. I'm sorry, Councilor uh, Antonio forgot one important meeting he was at. And he's now the chair of the Airport Commission. And uh, at that airport, because you're a very busy guy, not to be disrespectful there. Uh, and at the Airport Commission is an entity in our community that's planning to uh, provide air service. And I, I'm not going to go through the poll. There are a couple of entities providing, working on providing air service. A couple of the highlights uh, that they wanted from the community was they wanted to waive uh, if, if we go into business with them, because that, it looks like a, a business partnership to some degree with the town. They want to waive their landing fees, which we don't have. And they don't want to waive terminal fees, which I don't believe we have either. But uh, the thing that uh, some people were concerned about, they want to staff the terminal with the town that's one employee to greet the passengers, to unload and load them. And, yeah. Do, do the last part? They want to have staffing from somebody within the town of Swan River staff person to meet and greet the plane, load and unload. They want the town of Swan River to provide and store de-icing machines to de-ice the plane and take the plane to clean it up. And they want the town of Swan River to purchase $10,000 with the pre-booked flights. And in the meeting with the, one of the individuals on the airport commission in Dauphin, they have not been asked for that that concession at all. So to say the least, I'll, I'll share this letter with, with council and uh, we can take it at more length at a subsequent meeting. They had not, to my knowledge at the time, uh, had commitments from monies from individuals at that time from Dauphin. I think I'm right there, councillor. And the Dauphin people had money and the, the pathway would have been from Yorkton to Swan River to Dauphin to Winnipeg. So uh, I'm a little concerned about the, the we need it, absolutely, it's, it's vital. But there's, there's some significant uh, costs potentially for the Thomas Swan River in that process. So rather than getting great detail, I'll, I'll get copies of this letter they gave up with, and I'll get that to you. Question? So, Gloria, so they want these specifically from the Thomas Swan River or from the airport commission? They presented this to the airport commission and they said, We'd like to request that the town of Swan River purchase $10,000 in pre-booked flights for the first year. <clears throat> Councillor Wintoni, and, and in their defense, I guess, and then in the continuing ongoing meetings that we've, or information that was provided that hasn't been provided to the rest of the commission, the letter was addressed <coughs> to the commission itself, not to the town of Swan River. So there is a, a little bit of a discrepancy in that letter that they referred to the town of Swan River, and it's actually the airport commission that they're referring to. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, other rates and things like that, that'll be discussed uh, with the airport commission um, group, and then a, a, a decision will be made in there, but nothing specifically directed <clears throat> to the town of Swan River. It will be the airport commission looking after that project itself. So you, you spoke to them subsequent to receiving this letter? Yes. Is that clarification? That's correct. Or they sent another, uh, an amendment to this letter? An amendment to that there letter. Is, there's a written yeah. amendment to the letter? So, and we had, that'll be presented to the airport commission meeting that we have scheduled coming up on the 14th or 18th. I gotta look at my notes. Uh, the, did, they, did they talk about asking uh, the Dauphin community about yes, providing money? Yes, we have, we have uh, both letters uh, that were directed to Dauphin as well as York did request their official request to each of the communities. That was something that was asked for by the by the com or by the group there, and those would be provided as well, which I have in my briefcase, which we'll get to the airport yeah. commission. Uh, I have direct contact with the commission member. 
in the office so we can certainly exchange ideas with that individual. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that um, then and going into a little bit further discussion with that, um, we're looking at in terms of three three years of flights if we can if we can withhold three years of uh, guaranteed or of, of flights that are happening for three years, we can take advantage of some federal grants that are able to provide us with some major funding to upgrade our runway and, and facilities that we have, which will Derek and I will chat about that at some point and look into that. But there is potential for some serious federal funding for flights over three years. So if we can withstand three years of, of flight service, we can look at some serious upgrades to the runway. It's a, it's a wonderful concept. Uh, hopefully uh, something can happen in the flight world with, with whatever provider gets to us. Uh, the second thing, I went to uh, the Riverview Suites grand opening and we were invited as council to go there. And I think what a wonderful opportunity for people moving into our value valley from elsewhere and or within the valley itself uh, to attract uh, people to stay here. It's a beautiful facility. I compliment the mayor. He's going to be writing a letter to the Minister of uh, Health, trying to set up a meeting for the CT scan uh, meeting so we can get a little nudging. I, I can confirm that the MLA has been talking to him, but I'm sure if it comes from our, our entity here, it will have some more strength. And uh, I concur with Minister Fri or Mayor Councilor Friesen that uh, we lost a uh, significant person in our community with uh, Murray Wetstop and uh, condolence to his family. Happy New Year from the White House. <laughs> Not Trump's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Councillor White. Um, Mr. Poole, I believe that Mr. Gray wants to dial in. Okay. Are we able to uh, allow him in? Yeah, if he can call, he'll have to call my office so we can phone in an extension to four. And I can patch him through this phone. We can't dial ourselves to him. But yeah, I guess if you can let us know what number he's at, yeah. It's interesting that he uh, asked the officer for the 10 grand day. <coughs> did not. But they did not. He said they did not ask the officer at the time for 10 grand. Just asked us. I'd have to. Hmm? I'd have to look. I. Well, the doctor guy told me that. Very Chinese. Freddie Bell's dead. I know Freddie quite well. Freddie, is might, that is that? Who, you might want to save that for your commission. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Oh. So it is. He just wants you to use his cell one two zero four, two eight one, two two seven four. To, uh, Are you able to bring that closer to the Sponsor we have to run that through resolution. Put that off to him. It's free. Hello, Councilor Gray, you got me here? Okay, I'm just going to throw you on speakerphone. You ready to join? Okay, you got me? Can you hear us? I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, David. Hi there. Hi, well, everybody. Hi, Councilor Welcome. Gray. All right, so uh, the next uh, item of... Uh, uh, we're uh, just on 4.1. Uh, that's the public hearing. Moved by Councillor Morio, said by Councillor Delorier. Result of the public hearing 6 2018 now be called to order. All in favor? Mr. Gray, how do you vote? Uh, I vote yes, but I am going to declare a conflict. This is the, the variant. It is? Uh, I'm going to do, I, they, I act for the, app, or for the homeowners. Okay. Um, not in this matter, but in other related matters, and therefore, I don't think I should be part of the conversation. Okay, you, you'll just when wait. It's done, when it's done, perhaps call me back. Okay, we, fair we enough. We can probably mute that phone, I think. Yeah. So that? We'll, move, we'll mute you there. Do that. 
Okay. Uh, we'll call you. We'll get you back on the line in a few minutes. Good to go. Okay. So, uh, public hearing for application six two thousand eighteen is called to order at uh, seven forty five p.m. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application to allow a landing 2.25 feet from the side property line instead of the 10 feet minimum zoning requirement and to allow a sunroom 3.5 feet from a separate building instead of, a, of the six foot minimum zoning requirement. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. To request that, I request that any person make a representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Do you want to speak on it? Yeah. Okay. I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, I state my name. I'm Jordan Delore. And uh, uh, yeah, the uh, the property line. Jordan, yeah. you're you're representing the. I'm representing um, uh, my contracting company, CJ's Rental Construction, and I'll be hopefully doing the work at this residence place. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, so yes, yeah, so we're the landing will be two point two five feet away from the property line. The uh, structure the sunroom will be uh, what's that uh, five and almost just almost six feet away from the property line. Um, I know, yeah, because it's a corner lot, it's supposed to be ten feet away from the property line. The current house is uh, at the one end is only eight feet away. I think at one time Dixie Road that may, may not have been a road; it was just classified as a back alley or side street, and then now it's classified as a road. Um, also on there, the uh, sunroom <coughs> structure will still be uh, 19, 19 feet away from the road, from where the pavement starts. So right now there's a huge boulevard, but and uh, so there's hy hydro line or hydro poles, and then uh, and then the property line starts basically right right the hydro poles are just on the other side of the property line. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, there the landing and ramp. I'm uh, the ramp. I'm pushing back as much as far as I can this way within reason. So it uh, so the ramp back here is. I think it's. You guys all have this piece of paper yeah, in front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the ramp back here it is missing that measurement, but it, it will be seven. Okay, that uh, I guess that'll be only one foot away, but uh, I will. Uh, I can. I can bring. I can. I can bring that back, so to, to coincide with the two and a half feet, because uh, the two and a half feet is from the stair landing at the at the front, and then, uh, yeah. So uh, my drawing's a little off there. That, that ramp should be back. Um, Yeah, uh, so that is that. And now I guess the other variance there, the 3.5 feet, the sunroom to the garage. Because um, right now the sunroom is only gonna be 12 by 16. So it's not very big to begin with. So to bring it back two feet, we're only be, will we be at, or no, I have to bring it back, uh, yeah, two and a half feet. So then only at nine feet on the inside. Uh, uh, the uh, three and a half is, 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 yeah, from corner to corner, like the buildings don't overlap. Um, and the, uh, the, I've, uh, what happened in the beginning, I applied for the permit and, uh, and uh, when I spoke to the uh, uh, inspector, 
uh, before I even started. He said, "Get all, give me all the dimensions and everything of the buildings and the uh, current buildings and what you want to put on there. And, and then he told me all the distances from the road. So I did that for, to him, gave that to him, and he approved it. But he didn't, I didn't include it, it was my fault, and the, uh, gra the distance from the garage to the sunroom. And then so I got started, did the piles, and I started on the floor, and then I started thinking, why did he want it from the road? Why would he want it from the property line? So then I followed him and said, oh yeah, I meant the property line, I just took it as literally. So, so then that's where it stopped, and now we apply for the variance, and uh, that's where we're at there. And then so I came to the office here, got the measurements from him, put a string line from the property look to see the property line exactly because it's an oddball shape. It's a, it's a pie shape uh, property there. <clears throat> um, and so, yeah, so that's why we applied for the variance. And um, I know, yeah, it's supposed to be 10 feet back, but it's at least with a house, it's at the end of the street. It's not like you're going down three or four blocks and all of a sudden, oh, this building juts out, it's too close, and all the rest of them are going back to the, so, but. So even after it is complete, the uh, landing will still be, the closest the landing will be to the start of the pavement. There's no curb there, so I went to the start of the pavement. It's just a paved road, no curb. will be, uh, should have did more measurements on here. 19 minus, it'll be at 13 and a quarter feet away still. So it will be, in theory, 10 feet from the boulevard, from the pavement, but not from the property line. And also, yeah, the house still, its existing house still doesn't meet the 10 foot requirement as is. It's only at eight feet from the property line. And I think that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, Councilor Duarte. I was just going to say in light of the fact that it was highlighted, it's an odd shaped lot and there's still plenty of space before you actually hit road as far as viewing and, and traffic. I don't have an issue with it. Councilor Morio. Um, I have no issue like from the Dixie Road to the 18th, there's like 16 and change feet between there so that's no issue um, I just questioned to Derek with the three and a half feet from the sunroom to the garage um, any issue from the building or the fire chief regarding uh, buildings so close together is there any electrical outlets going in the sunroom in the sunroom yes yeah like that would be the reason for that requirement is like, is there a fire pit or something in between that space area? What's in between that? Uh, nothing. It's just grass and there's a clothesline. That's, that's it. Okay, I guess the, the, the fire chief or the, the building inspector didn't offer any uh, recommendations on, on not approving because of the 3.5 feet. Okay. Uh, so if they haven't weighed in, then yeah, personally, I guess I don't see an issue as long as the owner's aware that there's only 3.5 feet there. And yeah. There, and I, if something uh, happens, they have to take that. Because well. three, because you said the three and a half feet, that's from corner to corner. From corner to corner. That's not yeah. eave to eave. No. So the eaves could be like a foot apart. So the eaves uh, actually be further away because the garage is uh, it's eight foot walls, and then the and then your eave starts and it's sloping away. And on the sunroom, it's uh, I'm already three and a half feet plus my eight foot walls plus my heel. So the eave is actually from the from roof to roof is going to be ten more than six feet away. So so is the owner aware that they like being three and a half feet that there's the increased risk for fire jumping from one building to the next as compared to the requirement of separation? Uh, I. I, I, know, I, meant, I didn't mention the, the fire aspect of it, I just mentioned... So I, that, that'd be why there's that requirement from yes. building to building, so yeah. that fire doesn't jump from one as easy to the other. So right. If they're, if they're aware of it, so or willing to accept that risk. Okay, yeah, I didn't um, uh, mention that. I just uh, told her, them, that, yeah, it's a minimum of six feet, and we're going to three and a half feet, and... Uh, there's power in the garage as well? Uh, yeah, there's a couple outlets. They don't heat it or anything. It's not insulated. It's just a stud wall. 
Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Seconded <coughs> by Councillor Bentoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Resolved that the public hearing 6 2018 now be closed. Further discussion? All in favor? It's closed. 7 p.m. Okay, we can bring Mr. Gray back in. Did we want to go to the Vote on it down, later down before we Yeah, that's probably in. a good idea. Uh, right, then uh, we have. Uh, and just save Charles yeah. Gray down. Right. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the variation of order application number 6, 2018 by Jordan Delorier. For Lori Parker to allow a landing 2.25 feet from the side property line instead of the 10 feet minimum zoning requirement and to allow a sunroom 3.5 feet from a separate building instead of the 6 feet minimum zoning requirement to be approved. Further discussion? Go ahead. So just one more quick thought was was at any point the fire commission or our fire chief involved in Looking at that, Derek. I was unaware of. Is that something that we should consult with prior to making a decision? I think you'll know your answer. He'll say there's a reason for the rules. Stick to the rules. Uh, in this case, I don't know if there's a condition that, that might be available. I just don't know what that would be. Is restricting the amount of outlets in the sunroom? But uh, I don't think the fire chief would be. But I guess what would be the, or maybe there's a reason why he wouldn't go to it. I guess no, he didn't. He didn't talk to me, so I don't have that information. I guess I, I question where where we're heading with this because our zoning doesn't necessarily reflect <coughs> building materials. We could be build, building a fire rated wall there. We could be building out of masonry, which would. So I mean, to to use a hard and fast rule as far as six feet, you could have a. Uh, you know, a, a stone wall that's not going to burn down. It's just, you, you know, it, our zoning bylaw doesn't address construction materials. If, if we are, I know in the past, if, we, if that was a concern, we've, we've recommended that it be, we have a certain amount of fire rating. I'm not sure if three and a half feet warrants any right. kind of, anything no. like that, but, but our, to, to use our zoning black and white like that without taking into account what you're actually building with or, or any of the other things, I'm not sure if. It is typical for the building inspector to to let me know his opinion on it. If he was really against something, or if he had any concerns, he usually it's very typical for him to, to let me know of any concerns that he has. Uh, we did not receive any concerns from the fire chief or the building inspector on this one. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, let's bring in Councillor Gray. Gray, we're on um, uh, seven, seven point one. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Freeze. Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Any questions to Mr. Poole? I'll ask you. Uh, I'll ask you last. Okay, Mr. Gr uh, Councillor Gray. Absolutely. No questions here so far. You can go if you're ready. I have no questions. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Aye. Sorry? I voted aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah? No. Aye. Gonna sometime get used to that, but thank you. 
Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Morio. Resolved that the manager's meeting minutes be received. Discussion? Councillor Gray? Nothing. All in favor? Councillor Gray? Aye. Thank you. Okay, we had, uh, we kind of skipped ahead a little bit, Councillor Gray, on the uh, reports. So uh, I'll let, uh, just so that you can prepare yourself or get your mind together with that, I'll let uh, Mr. Poole go first. Everybody else here has gone already. We had a delay at the beginning. Uh, just to report, uh, just working through uh, some hurdles to get our clerk position filled. We do think it's worth it for how much time it's taking. Uh, the managers are working on their budgets, capital and operational. Uh, myself and Terry are preparing for the budget meeting for council, the presentation at the latter end of, of January, which uh, we'll discuss in, in camera later, possibly. Uh, just working on a few uh, staff HR issues, uh, uh, dealing with some building HVAC issues over the holidays, and uh, scheduling MTS to finally get our phone system repaired because that is we are starting to get some complaints on our phone system. <coughs> okay, Councillor Gray, you have a report, David. Councillor Gray? Hello? Is this Councillor Gray? Councillor Gray, we lost you. Okay, not a problem. We'll get you back. Got us? I got you. This is fantastic. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome back, Councillor Gray. Uh, we'll let you do your uh, your report now if you have one. Uh, well, yeah, there hasn't been a lot, obviously, happening since the last council meeting. We've had Christmas and New Year's. Um, there are three things that I do want to comment upon. Um, the first is uh, that if you look at, can you hear me? Yes. No? Okay, if you look at the, um, there's a, an online uh, site about Portage La Prairie. I think it's called portage.com or something like that. They had like 1.8 million, a billion dollars of investment in the last two years. And they're talking about other investments and so on. So uh, that's the kind of result that we're obviously in a different position than for Curry, but we but we should be in a position where we are able to get um, uh, that kind of a result out of rise. And so that's the, at the, the next rise meeting, I think both councillor uh, with Tony and I are going to raise with rise that that's the expectation we have for them. Uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, producing for us. And that our basis for proceeding is exactly on that level. The uh, second thing I would say, uh, or that I wanted to comment on, well, two things to then one. Uh, I'm not sure if our 
reports for the uh, pool and for the uh, arena are public yet, but I think we should meet the public. Uh, if they haven't been made public, I, I agree with the uh, with our lawyer uh, on the pool issue that it shouldn't be widely distributed, but we need to begin letting people know how serious those problems are because those are going to come to fruition over this year and in the next year. And if we don't start letting people know now, it's going to come as a tremendous surprise and we're going to have a huge problem. So for those two reasons, for that, those reasons, those reports should be made public if they aren't. That's the end of my report. Hello? Yeah, yeah. You, you keep on going. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, you said that was okay. the end of this report. Oh, I thought, oh, you said three items, but. Uh, yeah, that's the, those two were blending into one. Okay. Right and they, our reason so I guess just to say that you had mentioned about the Portage.com and, and, and with Rise and the connection with, or with the connection with Rise and, and what the future of our Rise might look at as far as looking at the model of Portage.com. And uh, the other was the report for the arena and the pool. The, uh, the arena report is a public document now and the pool one is not, which we haven't passed yet, but Definitely, if that's the wish of council, we can bring that forward at our next, uh, at our next meeting. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. It, it, it's not the 40s.com. It's what is called 40 .com. Um, And so there's there's issues from the RA of Portage and from the City of Portage and the amount of, of, of new um, investment in business that has been in those communities. And again, that's the model we need Follow. PortageOnline.com. Yeah, if, if you go to well, uh, that's PortageOnline.com, and there's there, they've got a ton of that's their their sort of public process for letting people know what's going on, which is actually an excellent idea for us in addition for communications. But that's not really what it was. It was if you go on there, you look and you'll see well, between the <laughs> area and the, and the city the amount of of investment in new industries has been extraordinary in that community and, and I think we need to start looking at what they're doing because we should follow that model. Okay, thank you. That was everything? That's everything for me. Okay. Moving on to new business, 8.1, moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Morial. Whereas the Town of Swan River conducts paperless council meetings using allnet.ca and each member of council is required to use an electronic device to access meeting information. Therefore, be it resolved that, one, that once per term of office, each member of council be reimbursed for the purchase of an electronic device up to a limit of $500 upon receipt of a paid invoice. Discussion? All in favor? Mr. Gray? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I uh, I guess, yes, it's fine. Okay, carry. Sorry. Carry. Moved by Council Wintoni, second by Council Morial. Result, the Town of Swan River support the, munis the rural municipality of St. Phillips in their efforts to request various upgrades to Highway 49 between Highway 9 and PTH 83. In your uh, information there, you see some correspondence from uh, the arm of St. Phillips. Any discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, even though that the, these roads are not uh, within our jurisdiction or in the province of Manitoba, we do have a large number of residents and repairs in our valley and the town of Swan River that use these roads. So I think uh, we need to support this RM in their effort to upgrade the roads in uh, their jurisdictions as I would assume they would do in ours if we had asked them the same way. So. Um, it's just to the betterment to everybody and our local economy on both sides of order to have adequate roads and petition both governments to uh, improve them. Okay. Councillor Gray, anything? No, that's perfectly uh, I, I agree entirely. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> Councillor Gray? Yes, I'm in favor. Carry. Moved by Councillor Latoni, second by Councillor Morial, result that the Town of Swan River approved the Hudson Bay Road Association membership request for the 2019 year. Discussion? Councillor Friesen? How much is it? 
the fee? Uh, 100. 100 per year. It's $100 the fee? Council Memorial. Um, again, this is another one that we should uh, support. Um, Hudson Bay Route Association was also an integral part of the uh, getting the rail line sold to uh, local entrepreneurs and communities within the province <coughs> versus an out of country ownership where we knew what their intentions were with it. So um, it's through our support and other municipalities' support uh, through organizations like this that uh, have now brought the ownership of the rail line to Hudson Bay back within Canadian ownership. Um, so I think we are important that we uh, support these uh, individuals in looking to bring economy and investment to the um, Port of Churchill and the maximize the use of the railroad. Council and Tony. I agree with Councillor Morio in that regard. I also feel that we should not only provide a uh, uh, the membership for this, but we should encourage discussions um, in terms of assistance um, and what we can do as, as economic growth with them and with our community as a whole. Um, but that would be, I think, part of the, the, uh, the Economic Development Committee to continue that support and discussions. Councilor Gray? Everything's fine. I, all, I couldn't agree more. Okay. All in favor? Councilor Gray? Aye. Aye. Carried. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Resolved that the following building permit applications be received. Swan Valley Co-op, 121 6th Avenue South, a storage shed for $7,297. Gratchen Grisson, 142 Crocus Drive, basement renovations, $15,000. Space Holdings Limited, 359 361 Kelsey Trail, office building, Addition, $340,000. Uh, there's another Space Holdings Limited, 359 Kelsey Trail. Remove interior offices, no charge, or no expense, I guess. Mm -hmm. Wayne Colhavy, 318 6th Avenue South, 12 by 16 foot barn, style shed, 5250 Friendship Center Housing, 415 6th Avenue North. New siding installation, 7000 Friendship Center Housings, 112 River Road, or sorry, Valley Road. New siding and installation, 8,000. Swan Valley Mutual Aid, 616 3rd Avenue South. Construction of training prop, 5,000. Derek Boychuk, 321 Main Street. Repair outer wall, in install siding, $41,739. William Sackle, 1640 Main Street. 30 by 50 foot storage shed, 10,500. Tyler Burnside, 309 Swan River Drive, decked and three season room, 50,000. Muriel and Lori Parker, 109 Crescent Drive, 12 by 17 foot season, sorry, 12 by 17 foot four season deck, 33,200. Friendship Center Housing, 19 Park, Parkway Drive, new siding, 18,000. William Auto and Electric, 12 Vivian Street, Pole Shed and Co Pole Shed Cold Storage, 60,000. Sapatoya Cremation, 703 Main Street East, Pylon Sign, 20,000. Sapatoya Cremation, 703 Main Street East, 1034 square foot gas kiosk canopy, 965,000. Sapatoya Cremation, 703 Main Street East, 1,096 square foot sea store. 842,000. Dennis Bullich, 1505 Government Road, number 214 North, ready to move home, 100,000. Jason Eisner, 1328 Main Street, offices, partition, lobby area, 25,000. Jason Eisner, 1328 Main Street, offices, partition, training room, 25,000. Royal Canadian Legion, 123 6th Avenue North, kitchen renovations, 30,000. Shane Stories, SRS Signs, 900 Main Street East, replace three sign faces, 5,000. Please don't ask me to read that again. <laughs> Discussion? Councillor Gray? Uh, no. All <laughs> for our, our information, I think. Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Ooh, oh, sorry, Councillor uh, uh, White. Uh, I think more of a comment than a discussion. <laughs> I want a compliment to our community. When I see these millions of dollars being invested, Obviously, a lot of people have faith in the direction that we're going and the support of our staff. 
So uh, kudos to all the people who are investing in the valley, and thanks to them. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Carried. Okay, number nine, um, unfinished business. Resolved and removed by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Resolved the Town of Swanner would provide the RM of Livingston, Saskatchewan, with a required six months notice to cancel the said fire service agreement. Discussion. Councillor White, then Wintoni. Uh, we talked about this uh, at a, a previous meeting, and I'm a little uncomfortable giving that letter until I've had confirmation that our fire chief has, in fact, entered into communication with the RM of Livingston, seeing how this may or may not <coughs> impact them. And I'm not sure that has occurred or hasn't. It has uh, by phone and by email. Okay. So we did email them to get it in writing, and we did call them to gain their thoughts, and all they basically did was accept it, that it was just confirmed that it was received, and they, they haven't called back with any concerns so far. How long will that occur? Oh, that was before Christmas. Okay. Council and Tony. To reiterate what Councillor White said, that was my question entirely. Um, if that was sent off for that, um, I know that through the holidays, perhaps we should. Uh, just a thought that if there was any follow up that we would have maybe heard, but however, it's pretty early in the new year. I'm not sure if we should table it once more and then um, ensure that there was a follow up call in regards to that in case they did have any thoughts or had meetings on their end that they weren't able to contact us prior to this meeting be so, being so early in the year. Uh, uh, has the protected service committee met on this particular item? And do you have a recommendation then, or, or do you want to meet again? I think we should, first, I think we should, think we should table it, and uh, maybe uh, ask the chief. I need confirmation that they've got the message and they're okay with it. I'm not hearing, I've heard the no comment, and no comment to me is not, is not enough. So if it's the wish of the mover and the seconder, who is Councillor Friesen and Councillor Tony, that we're going to move, or we're going to uh, table this, then I would probably recommend that the committee go back and discuss this and bring something for the council. I agree with that. Okay. Councillor uh, Dorme. I, I gather that the concern is, is almost at the political level as far as we don't want to snub our nose in a municipality. Perhaps it'd be interested if the chairman of protective services could phone the, the read with the municipality and just get, get the confirmation that, that he's looking for. Councillor Fraser. My concern is that they have fire protection from somewhere close that they're not relying on us here. Yeah, it was. I did talk to them personally, and it was me who they, you know, they wouldn't give me any comments or anything. They just, they just said that they received the email and you, nothing. You spoke with their CAO? No, their uh, employee, the uh, secretary. Oh, okay. Yeah, so but uh, like I would guess, I guess we can wait till the until we want them to comment. But I'm pretty sure we're going to get a comment of please don't <coughs> tear up this agreement because it is very much in favor of the other side. Like we have to keep up with equipment replacements, training, administration, operations, and they pay only when they use it. Like that is an ideal council, agreement. Council one twenty, then call center. Um, as it was stated, I think that the committee should go back and then bring the council on the uh, proper terms in order to not have this discussion at this table. It should be the discussion of, with that committee. Councilor Delorier? Well, the, the concern that administration is bringing forward is something that I've brought forward a couple of times throughout the course of our negotiations for, for prior agreements with other municipalities. And that's for the, for the fact that if you look historically, our the call volume from, from both within the town of Swan River and out, outside has decreased. If you look over the last 30 years, nobody burns with wood anymore. All, like the fires are on the downswing, which is a good thing. But eventually, we, we very much could reach a point where we have no calls. If we have no calls, we don't get paid. But we need to be we need to have get our partners on board with looking at fire protection as a form of insurance, and 
we have to keep up the insu the, the insurance, i.e. the man the man manpower, the equipment, all that. So we, we almost need to move to not from a model of of per call payment, but on what is the value of what we're protecting? Pay pay on uh, on assessment. So I, I think all our fire groups need to move this now. If if because this is what <laughs> happens now, all of a sudden we're not getting paid, and we don't want to provide the service. If we were getting paid based on assessment, we'd have no issue, and that's really how it should be. Because hey, you, one day in the town of Swan River there might be a uh, no fires one year. Does that mean we're going to disband the fire department because there's no fires? No, it's insurance that we're going to have to pay for forever. But that's just a fact of life. So I think we need to to get all of our fire agreements on board with with a scenario like that. Reasonable. Councilor Gray, do you have anything to add? No, I think Councilor Gray's points are well taken that we should be relooking at all of our agreements into this one. I would say that with respect to the arm of Livingston, uh, that's a sort of a, a service area that we have as the Swan River Valley. And I know it's across the provincial border, but um, can we really afford to alienate anybody? And I think we need to be very careful to make sure that we address with them what the alternatives are. And that might be a first place where we would start by saying, we need you to contribute more than just when we call. So that's, that's my thoughts, that we would be better served in going into a negotiation. Uh, and eventually, if we have to, terminating, but not arbitrarily terminating, I think that's going to send an incredibly bad message, especially from a, uh, a sort of a, an economic development perspective. Okay. Councillor Delorier. Well, I guess, I guess that's probably the, the path that I would like to see us go down rather than terminate the agreement. Let's renegotiate it to, uh, and maybe it will set the standard for how we, uh, for how we need to, to uh, interact with our other partners as far as fire service. Absolutely. Councillor Morio and then Councillor Wintoni. Um, I think as it's pointed out in the decision paper that came from the fire chief and stuff like that, I don't think it's totally a matter of dollars and cents as in, in church, which is very good points. Uh, I think that the, as discussed at the committee level, it, it was more of an issue that uh, since our area has expanded to the north east of us significantly uh, in recent time, um, the geographic area for the fire department is get so great now that uh, there could be uh, if there's if they're out in the argument from Livingston and then they have another response that their geographic <coughs> area is now getting so huge that they may not provide adequate fire response and but I think we can take it back to the committee have the discussion with the army of Livingston uh, go from there get confirmation if they have any concerns and whatnot especially over the holidays that uh, you know we didn't do a whole lot over the holidays, so I imagine they didn't do either. So, and it's only January 2nd, so um, tabling it um, for the committee to, to talk about and then bring back to the next meeting um, is not inappropriate. Councilman Tony. Took the words right out of my mouth, and like I said before, the, uh, we'll, the committee will discuss and bring back to council. Okay. Council Gray, you have last words? I have nothing to add. I think we've all come to the same consensus and let's just go forward as we agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, just before we go on to 10, uh, we just have one that was back from, uh, uh, that was added to, uh, or just handed to me, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to add it for 8.6. Uh, resolution moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, whereas the Age-Friendly Committee is recommending an award that would recognize an individual who has made significant contributions to our community. And whereas the Age-Friendly Committee shall coordinate and receive nominations for selection and therefore be resolved, the Town of Swan River initiate a Citizen of the Year Award. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Uh, I think before we discuss this resolution, I think we need to make uh, take a motion or whatever if we accept this as on the agenda as part of our procedures bylaw. Not that I agree, but if we're gonna, we have a procedures bylaw, okay, so I think we need to follow it. Okay. Council uh, Gloria. Um, was this recommendation came from the H friendly committee? Was it unanimous? Was it just two of us? Yeah. Only two of you guys on the committee? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Sit out of us. 
uh, you know, just the words from Council Morio that I agree that uh, in the future, like if the committees do want to add something as a resolution, that they probably should do so prior to the, uh, the agenda being uh, taken, you know, or, or being done up. And if some type of item that comes up in a discussion, then a resolution can be brought forward. But this is a new item here entirely, so. Um, we could probably let it slide this time, but in the future, um, we should probably well, we, follow as, what our as procedures per, are. As per the procedures bylaw, we can take a vote now to add it to the um, agenda, and we're fine. Okay. So, so Councillor Gray, sorry, I'd just like Councillor Gray to step in on that. Councillor Gray? Yeah, uh, I don't disagree with you, Your Worship, and quite candidly, the idea of the citizens of the year is a good one, so I think we should go ahead. Okay. I agree. Okay. So, any further discussion? All in favor? I, I had more. I had more discussion. Oh, you did. I did have my hand. Okay, sorry. Councilor uh, Tony. <laughs> now my my track is kind of completely gone, but um, I agree with Councilor Morio. I, I and I agree with something of this nature to move forward, but I would just like to ensure that our procedures, bylaws, and our procedures are, are followed through. Secondly, in, in regards to the rest of it, the age-friendly committee, it's the first time I've heard of it, it just, it just developed currently, and then secondly, the award that you're talking about, what does that look like in terms of when is it presented, is it going to be presented at something that the, the town is behind, or what, what is the thoughts on the whole whole thing? And before we get to that, sorry for interrupting again, um, perhaps we should have that vote whether or not it's going to be moved forward and then we can have that discussion if that's the case. Councillor Delore. Well, the resolution at this point is just to initiate de developing the award. I think, I don't know if those details are all sorted out. I think the age friendly committee is probably just looking to, uh, to develop that, yeah. have a, basically looking for permission to go ahead and develop that. Okay, sorry. And exactly all that criteria and what that might look like, those committee members will have to create something and bring it forward to council. So, are we okay to vote on this yes. tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All okay? Carries. Thank silly. you. Okay, moving on to accounts. Moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Lintoni. Resolved that the accounts here follows, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number 23647 to number 23733 for a total of $91,227.21. There's a note here, general accounts checks number 23647 and 23659. And to number 23672 to 23677, were due to technical issues. Payroll uh, accounts checks number 4363 to number 4370 for a total of 104,820 and 19 cents. Payroll accounts check number 4371 to number 4375 to a total of 9,686 dollars and 22 cents. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Uh, check number 23682 um, for a new computer at the arena. For that, <coughs> what kind of computer did we get? I or, am not sure. I'll have to get back to you after Patty comes back off vacation. See, to work to where. Either it's a pretty pricey computer or a pretty pricey installation for that price. Yes. I can ask that question to take note on that. Uh, Councillor Deloria. 23731 Maple Bus Lines. Who will be center on the bus? 23731. Oh, probably, it's probably a freight water charge. Yeah, we've used uh, both Kelsey and uh, Maple for our water treatment plant. Uh, okay. Good to know. Councillor Gray. Uh, I have nothing but uh, value speaking. I have a couple of questions I'll ask uh, Mr. Poole and Private, but uh, these are pretty straightforward. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, 
carried. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the financial statements for the 11 months ended November the 30th, 2018, be adopted as received. Discussion. Councillor Gray? No, they look in order as far as I can tell. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Carried. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White, resolved that the town of Swan River bylaw to Sorry, resolved that the town of Swan River bylaw to amend its bylaw to 2018, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of money for the installation of curb, gutter, and asphalt pavement at the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 1200 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read at first time. Discussion? Councillor Gray? Fine. All in favor? What did you say about what, what reading is this? This is the first. First? The Aye. Agenda, the agenda says second. There's first and second on the agenda for the borrowing bylaw for the local improvement. Oh, okay, I see. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Deloria, result the town of Swan River bylaw to a Bylaw to amend its bylaw number two, 2018, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of money for the installation of curb gutter and asphalt pavement at the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 1200 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor Gray. I'm the one who bitched before that we didn't do this, remember? That, that this is No, I, I put them both on there just to, because it was a, I guess it's not a contentious bylaw, it's, it's for the exact amount that people are, are, are financing for this project. So that was the reason why they both went on. Uh, if, if Council's wishes to have them one at a time, that can just be straight out for every bylaw. Uh, this was done just because of the simple nature of the bylaw, I guess. Does, um the mover and the seconder will wish to table this so that we could have it in our next. I guess. Uh, I can't who, who, if there's three there. Who's the third time? No, no, no. Oh, that's nine. What's the wish? I, I'm pretty agnostic as far as this, that like uh, Mr. Poole says, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing different than what we told the people. But again, as Councillor Gray says, we have a new process. We want to follow that. So I'm good either way. There's nothing that it's going to be holding up, Mr. Poole? Uh, no. No? Okay, then I'm fine with holding off on tabling it till next meeting. Okay. So the mover was Councillor White. Fine. So we'll table this, Councillor Gray, till the next meeting. Thank you. And it'll get posted on the website there? Yeah. Part. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah we're still here. Just okay. uh, moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor Lentoni, resolved that bylaw number 9, 2018, be read a third time and passed. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Uh, the bylaw that was on the agenda is. I think Mr. Poole is handing out the corrected version. It's the one that was on the website or our agenda was completely wrong. It had all our standing committees and committee appointments wrong as compared to the Schedule A that was passed on November 6th. So, yeah, that's a communication error on, or a filing error, I should say, on uh, on my part. Okay. The wrong PDF went on the agenda. We had enough time to look at that. I have some 
besides the changes here. So I have some wording changes for <coughs> that that I could uh, give you on. Do you want to then table have this table as well? No, nope, I can, next or what would you like? I can present the changes to Mr. Cool and he can post them up for the committee to or council to review for the third. Well, this is this the, is the third. This is the third. Is the third. Yeah. Is the third. So I need to table it. Yeah, we need to table this. Uh, okay. So the mover okay. is Councilor Delorier and the seconder is Councilor Wintoni. We're tabling this one. Yeah. Do you want to pass on your changes? To me, and I'll make sure our committee talks about it. Okay, I'll finish them up with what the, I just circled them, but okay. I'll give it to you, committee. So, okay, they're more just grammatical and stuff like that. Okay, Councillor Gray, do you have anything to add? No, oh, that's fine. If, if there's additional changes, it's exactly the process we defer and, and make the changes. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Wynn Tony. Resolved that the bylaw 10 2018 be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? The only comment I would make, Your Worship, I'm not sure if I'm able to speak. Go ahead. Uh, the only comment I would make, and, and it was made by uh, Council Delorier, I'm sure, earlier, that uh, as chair of the committee, that, that we are going to be. Uh, Making further changes, but this is what we've decided upon for the time being. It's functional, uh, but not uh, what we consider uh, perfected. Okay. Councilor Moria. Okay, so I don't know, uh, Mr. Cool, if there's still some, uh, I guess, grammatical errors or something like that where we have X's on some of those. Yeah, items. that's. The, again, that's a filing error, or not a filing, <coughs> just communication between me and Roger. The one I have up, Roger's uh, own edits or the X's, so I can I can take those over. It will be deleted. Okay. That just means that Roger, that's Roger's uh, way of saying he's made his changes. And this is the second reading to that one. That second reading. Yeah. Okay. And then I also have. A suggestion at 13.5 to 13.6. Um, now that we are separating uh, bylaws to be only one bylaw reading per meeting, um, there should be another paragraph entered in between 13.5 and 13.6 that represents the second reading um, as it does in <coughs> the first and third. So, this is 13.5 to 13.6. Each member present at the meeting at which first reading is to take place must be given, or I've had the opportunity to review the full text of the proposed bylaws before the bylaw receives first reading. And then at 13.6, as it currents, it shows with like the third reading. Yeah. So now we need to have something for second. second reading in there. Okay, so we can make those changes. We should table this, make those changes, and. Uh... Okay. And then I can send, I'll show you some of the other spelling or grammatical errors. Okay. On there too. So uh, the mover was Councillor Freeze and the second one was Councillor Wintoni. You agreed to table? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Councillor Gray? That, that's fine. I agree. Uh, but that was the understanding we had. Um, as I said, I thought we were going to do a more complete job, but if that's fine, we can defer this one for one meeting and doesn't pose any problems at all. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Like, I don't know if we have to defer, like, table this. This is only second reading. No, no third reading. Oh, third. Okay. Third reading. This was the third reading on both of them. It says second on the uh, indemnity is second. Oh, 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 yeah, you're right. Those things are backwards on there. Oh, yeah. It yeah. 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 should be, yeah. Yeah. Should be yeah. reversed Sorry. on there. No. It's just third, confusing to follow the third, uh, second, uh, Okay, we're good. <clears throat> okay, it's so moved by Councilor Antonio, second by Councilor Morio. Resolved that bylaw number 11, 2018, which is Council Indemnity, be read a second time. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, again, um, I voted against this in the first reading. Um, I also uh, would like to make some changes uh, where it's 
section three uh, in the travel allowance. It says, and the mileage rates shall be set for 45 cents per kilometer, kilometer travel. Um, I don't know if we need to have that specifically there when we're referring to the travel policy for the town of Swan River. If we're just, because then the policy could be changed depending on what it is, but you're specifying that you could have a contradiction between the Swan River travel policy and this bylaw if the right. policy changes. No, it would make sense that we delete that last sentence. Okay. Other comment that I got is that uh, I understand the reason why they're looking for the, the increase is for the deletion of uh, section 4D, which allowed for the one third of the allowance for the useful business to be deemed for the expenses incident to the discharge of their duties. So if we were allowed one third of our, as a council duty, that's $4,091.74. I don't think any of us spent $4,000 on incidentals or office, personal office for it, which was the reason for one third tax credit. So if you're looking to increase it to maintain that, I think there's other avenues to reimburse incidental expenses and stuff like that versus an arbitrary wage increase. Because the intent of that from Canada Revenue was the one third to be setting up a home office with additional expenses and stuff like that. I know for myself, I did not spend $4,000 in one year for incidentals. Okay. Any other discussion? Councillor Gray? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> More, Council Morial opposes? <coughs> Carried. Okay. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Fries, and resolve that pursuit to Section 152 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss. Labor uh, update with the clerk and also the CEO. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Thank you.